Welcome to the Journal Editorial Report. I'm Paul Gigo. Well, with no time to spare, Congress passed and President Obama signed into law this week a bill to avoid the so-called fiscal cliff. The New Year's Day deal represents the biggest tax increase the country has seen in 20 years, all in return for billions of dollars in new spending and spun, of course, as a tax cut for the middle class. You know, I think I used the word 80 billion. It's supposedly 40 billion in specially targeted tax credits. Tell us about this and why is this nonsense still going on? Well, actually, my, I come up with a number more like 75 billion. And what it is, it's a number of existing tax credits that, and tax breaks that were supposed to expire at the end of the year, along with the fiscal cliff. And late in the negotiations, the White House insisted on keeping many of these tax credits. So what they did is they, base, they copied and pasted a bill that had passed out of the Senate Finance Committee back in August. They just took that and at the last minute dumped it into the fiscal cliff bill. So now we have algae subsidies, we have wind subsidies getting extended and even Hollywood gets its own tax credit. Yeah, I want to go there. I got uh, just a few, okay, from your stuff and other stuff. NASCAR subsidy, <laughs> NASCAR, okay, very wealthy operation. They got $78 million tax credit, okay. Uh, let's see, the tuna company, Starkist Plus, gets a $62 million tax credit for their operation in America and Samoa. A rum making company, $222 million. This is big money. And as you just said, and I want to pause on this, Hollywood gets 430 million bucks. Chris Dodd, the former head of the banking committee, is their chief lobbyist. He's got his hands into everything. And it's in order to make movies in depressed population areas. 430 million bucks. What is up with that? All those millionaires in Hollywood, all those guys that voted for Obama, now their snouts are at the trough, aren't they? And what, and what, ha what happened to paying the fair share? This is, I think, the big, oh. two, the big two hypocrisies are, are Obama saying, oh, we need the wealthy to pay their fair share, and then uh, handing out these tax Big business and big banks right here on the East Coast. General Electric. Big subsidies for green energy and offshore tax havens. Goldman Sachs gets a tax yep. credit to build a new building in downtown New York. And Citi also uh, gets a, a subsidy for offshore. These are the banks. I thought we stopped giving money to the banks. Steve, let's go to you first. Uh, I think based on our conversations this week, you like this deal a little bit more than I do. Why don't you make the, the best case for, uh, for doing it, for, for, it, for, the, for the deal? Well, Paul, this was, a, for Republicans, a kind of eat-your-spinach moment. I, I just don't see any other alternative to what happened. And look, I think this is a rancid deal for so many reasons, uh, especially the fact that I think it's really harmful to the economy. I guess my point, Paul, would be I don't see Republicans had much choice. I mean, you talk to John Boehner, you talk to Mitch McConnell, and what they say is for six, seven weeks, the president simply would not budge one inch on cutting spending. He simply had no interest in doing that. Uh, the Republicans believed, and I think they were probably right, that if they had gone into 2013 without this tax issue re uh, resolved, right. they would just be pummeled day after day by the president. So I hate the deal. I just think it was like the least rotten apple that they could have gotten. Rancid deal, but uh, had to take it. I don't like the, stim the spinach uh, uh, metaphor here. That's good for you. It may not taste good, but it's good for you. I'm not sure this bill is good for the economy. How much damage is there to the economy from this bill, Mary? Well, I prefer the least rotten apple over the spinach. I mean, I think that the really do two big problems here is that people who believe that the rich should pay more do not understand the effects of marginal rates. And when you raise it's on the marginal next rates, dollar of income that you. Earn. Right. So it lowers the incentive of the people that you want to take risk mm -hmm. and to innovate and to create. So that's one problem. So it'll affect the growth of the economy. The other problem is it does affect tax revenues. I mean, the guys with the green eye shades keep saying, well, if we raise the taxes this much, we'll get this much more in revenue. But if you lower the incentive of people to take risk, generally what happens is that revenue does not uh, come in. So you don't get as much as you think you'll You'll, exactly. Yeah. And but, I here, think but here, Mary, look, the economy seems to be, the stock market loved this bill, right? They just blew, blew out the next day. It's, uh, it's been up for a while based on the prospect that something would get done. Housing markets recovering. I mean, the economy, the job market, not great still. 
155,000 new jobs, but the economy does seem to be doing okay. Well, I think that's probably right. The economy will do okay, but you know, when you have unemployment at 7.8 percent and it's really stubbornly not budging, you want to do something that does something more for the economy than just okay, than muddling through. I mean, if you're the president, you can fly back and forth to Hawaii. You're not feeling it, but there are lots of people who are feeling the malaise of the economy, the low, slow growth. So I think it's disappointing that we weren't able to do something that was really more have more of a positive impact. Dan, well, there were there were a couple of big words attached to the fiscal cliff. One was uncertainty; the economy, the business needed certainty, and the other was the prospect of a recession. I think the deal probably undoubtedly does avoid a recession. We're not going to have uh, negative growth. But we are probably going to have growth, as we have had for about the last two years, of 2% or less. So we do have an economy, but we do have an economy that's bumping along the bottom. In terms of the certainty of the tax deal, yes, we do have that. But on the other hand, the Obama health care law is going to be implemented, implemented mm -hmm. all through 2013. Right. The Wall Street Journal just reported that only 14% of small businesses actually understand the Obama health care <laughs> law. So there is a huge an overhang of uncertainty. And then plus Dodd-Frank, which is going to be implemented, implemented through the financial industry. Why do we have 2% growth? I think those are the reasons. We have some positive signals for the economy, but not enough to pull it up. Steve, let me, let me uh, uh, is there a silver lining here at all that maybe the public will begin to understand that you can't reduce the deficit uh, with a tax increase? You just can't do it? I mean, this represents, what, $600 billion, they say, over 10 years. That's about 6, 7% max of, of, of what the deficit yeah. is. Great point, Paul. And by the way, let me just step back a minute and say that you and I and Dan and Mary, we've lived through these budget deals, right, for 25, 30 years. This is the first, and, and almost none of them have really worked out very well, but this is the first budget deal that I can recall, uh, dating back to the early Reagan years, where there wasn't even a, a pretense of cutting spending. You know, usually it would be $3 of, <laughs> of phony spending cuts for a dollar of tax increase. There, there was, in fact, we increased spending in this deal right. with the big extension of unemployment insurance. Now I think the Republicans are on a little bit higher ground as we go forward. President, you saw President Obama in his little press conference after uh, he signed the bill saying, this is only the first of many tax increases to come in 2013. I, I believe the Republicans are not going to budge an inch on that. I think they're going to basically say, Mr. Obama, you got your tax increase on the rich. Now we have to turn to spending. And I think that's where the real fight is headed now. Mary. Paul, I really think that anybody who thinks that this gives businesses certainty is crazy. I mean, as, as Steve just said, President Obama is already saying he wants more tax increases. Right. He's not done with that at all. And there is no solution on the spending side. So there's no certainty out there. People are still looking at a very expensive Obamacare and no way to pay for it. If we